Hey everyone, welcome back to MSCM. We're already here at the finals. It's another month gone. It's hard to believe how fast these things come and go. We've got a really interesting match for you today. So uh, hopefully uh, we give you a good show. It can go in a very different direction depending on how certain players uh, pop off. Uh, we've got some absolutely aggressive Blue Red Prowess decks here from uh, Cool Beans. And Nyx is on Reshaper Combo, which uh, can win out of nowhere. So going to be a pretty interesting matchup uh players look like they're just getting ready here so what we're going to do actually is in the meantime we're just going to go on over to the deck lists get a little chance to look at what players are packing here uh so cool beans is running your usual suite of one mana pros cards cards like unraptured countess seeker of mysteries autumn fey and of course the big star of the show nizev enforcer Alongside it, we are running Strong Arm, Shroud and Stars, Extreme Speed, as well as a bunch of sorcery versions such as Festival Sabotage, Bite Blitz, and then Scorch to kind of finish it off. Coal Lines lets you reduce your land count and also count as non-creature spells. So, uh, you know, this deck can do some really gross things, especially with Nizev Enforcer, though obviously it's not the only uh, prowess card that does work. It's just the fact that as a 1-2 prowess that as soon as you throw a single plus 2 point of uh, growth like plus two power on uh, an instant or a sorcery on it the prowess will kick in and then at the end of your step at the beginning of your end step you'll get another copy um we are likely going to be seeing a change to this card so uh for next month it's funny how it's uh, giving me like phoenix flashbacks it's another blue red deck that's doing some pretty fast things but it's not as horrible i would say as phoenix but a card that's one mana and can, you know, roll out this much, uh, this efficiently, it's something that we have to look at. And we'll check the sideboards uh, when uh, the players will. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk real quick about Reshaper while uh, players keep setting up. We have the titular Dead Man's Hand here. So it might look impossible to activate. You need to sacrifice it, two permanents with mana value one, two permanents with mana value eight, and then target player loses the game. Well... You never really have to do that because the way the entire deck works is you get this, you get Dimensional Reshaper that once each turn lets you exchange, uh, well, two permanents become copies of the other until end of turn, so they essentially swap what they are, and then all you need to do is drop a card like Imperial Coins here, which has Spirited, or uh, the Imperial Collection, and as soon as that enters, Spirited says, well, when it enters, you can activate one of this card's activated abilities without paying its cost, which usually is trivial, but in this case, when you flip it to Dead Man's Hand, you immediately kill your opponent. This deck's doing a lot of work. It's putting a lot of our soul lands, our lands that are able to tap for two or more mana to work, as well as our enchantment and artifact lands. And on top of that, it's got a beatdown backup plan where it can just go Shining Crusader, Light Bless Claymores, uh, and start beating down. So it's got a lot of ways to dig as well. Tinkerer's Tools, Soul Synthesizer, Unmarked Vials, Egg of Avarice, Gilded Spyglass all give you ways of digging for the cards that you need, and Cradle of War gives you a way to circumvent counter spells. So this deck is packing a lot in uh, in, uh, in its uh, 60, as we say. Uh, it's funny how the lands are all also really important. This can tap for two, this can tap for two, and is super easy to turn on when you have artifact lands and enchantment lands. The Workshop might be legendary, but it can tap for two for artifact spells. Planner Academy is another way of getting your cards quickly. Bastion and Blackwall's Edge uh, are pretty good here as enchantment lands that do just a little bit more. Brian Feet Bay can be a, pardon me, a 5-5 five five if you need to crew it up and do something with that, though I haven't seen that happen yet. Looks like our players are just about ready to draw their opening hands, so let's wish them all the best and let's see how things start. Because of seeding, Cool Beans will be on the play here. Draws an opening hand with just one land, but there is a Galvan Coal line, which can come in as the second land. You've got your only one um, Prowess card, though. You've got a lot of the cards that will make it big. you got Scorch for damage and Festival Sabotage as well, but with just the one, maybe Cool Beans is going to start digging for uh, perhaps the uh, a higher density of Prowess cards. But then again, you know, you're going down to six. It gets a little tricky. Up here, we've got Center of Culture and Blackwall's Edge in Nyx's hand. So, you know, two good lands to get started off. It's an enchantment land, so you're already halfway there. And then all you need is the artifact creature and Volatile Stonework, and you've already got Center of Culture online. Egg of Avarice can crack Volatile Stonework, so you can go get another creature with mana value. One put onto the battlefield. You got two copies, so it's a little redundant. 
But you've got Gilded Spyglass to go digging even deeper, and you've already got Dead Man's Hand as part of your uh, combo kill here. So yeah, we're... Uh, Looks like both players are staring down their hands. I believe Cool Beans is going to have to make the decision and ultimately decides to go for Mole 6. I would imagine it's to find uh, more Proist cards. This actually looks way better. A Rousing Path, a Frostfire Gazers is going to unfortunately enter tapped unless we get a basic, but it is what it is. We've got Seeker, we've got Fey, we've got Countess, and then we have Scorch and a Bite Blitz here. So we're keeping six here. Uh, Nyx is keeping the seven. I would have been very surprised to see this hand get sent back. So, all right, Cool Beans is going to start off. Uh, pretty sure it's important to get out your threats early against uh, Nyx because you know you're on a clock. And there's not much interaction that's going to happen beyond like volatile stonework exploding. So there's like a trick where do you hold off? Do you not? I don't know. I'm, I'm the kind of person who probably would just start running out some beats. And if they put out volatile stonework, and then egg you next turn, it's done the work, but if you hold off on playing a creature on turn one to play a tapped frost fire gazers, so that you have two mana on the next turn and you can always give haste with a bite blitz, maybe you do that because if your opponent turn one's a stonework, well, you know. But if your opponent doesn't play a creature, I would just play egg of aver um, I would just, you know, uh, no, I would still run out volatile stonework even with nothing. Like it's you want the creature to chip in for a damage and then you want egg even if, you know. You can't choose something. So there's Seeker. Drawing into Harvest Reaper here. So Harvest Reaper is a 1-1 one, one for 1. When a creature scavenges Harvest Reaper, you can search your library for a colorless card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And it's got Scavenge too. So this card is really good. Uh, because it can get any colorless card, it can get a lot of things. Uh, it can get lands, and it can get uh, artifacts. So... And, of course, if you have, for example, a uh, colorless Planeswalker or just about anything else, it can get those too. So, quite a fun card. And uh, the creature is the Scarecrow, not, I believe, the little uh, fox thing piloting it. Just kind of a cute guy, I guess. Alright, so Nyx is going to think a little bit. So, you could be a Harvest Reaper turn. Not that it's going to be blocking the 1-1 one, one Seeker, because it's flying. But um, on the other hand, you could instead play either of these, either Black Wall's Edge uh, or Center of Culture, and then you can print out, uh, put out Volatile Stonework. You can name Seeker of Mysteries here. Well, you choose it, essentially. And uh, you know that if ever you manage to play your egg on the next turn, you can crack it at instant speed to kill it. So yeah, you got some flexibility here. All right. There's a lot of things that you have to think about with uh, this sort of deck. Um, I imagine Cool Beans might be lenient, but of course, if uh, it looks like uh, Nyx is going for uh, really long turns here, you know, like upwards of two, three minutes, uh, Cool Beans is probably allowed to ask them to play a little more prompt. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, Nyx's deck has a lot of lines, and it's, it's pretty important to, to think about all the different parts. So. Looks like we're going Harvest Reaper, and we're playing the Dead Man's Hand early to already have it on the field. So, that's going to be uh, probably it for the turn here. We're going to pass it forward. We've got the Artifact, we've got the Creature, so all we're missing is the Enchantment, which is going to come with Black Wall's Edge next turn, so we'll have three mana between those two. So you can do a Volatile Stonework and Egg in the same turn. You can do Gilded Spyglass if you want, even though you can't activate it right away. There's quite a few things you can do. I don't actually believe you can this deck in Dead Man's Hand. I don't think there's anything with mana value 8, so that's that's sort of out of the question here. But yeah, tap Frost Fire, unfortunately, but Strong Arm here is nice. Plus 2, plus 1. In this case, you know, plus 3, plus 2 because of the prowess. You get a tap Treasure, which is going to be relevant, and clocking in for 4. That's already a decent chunk out of Nyx's life total. Um, with 3 mana means next turn you can go Autumn Fey and Bite Blitz. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7-8 damage, and then your opponent's almost gone, and just requires another Bite Blitz on the following turn. The fact that these are Flyers are actually quite good here. And, uh, yeah, the fact that Volatile is not on the field yet means that if we're doing a Volatile this turn, with uh, Edge, Volatile, uh, Egg of Avarice, so we'll see. Okay, So we're at 3. Let's see what the play ends up being. Soul Synthesizer is nice for digging for stuff, but 
if you're really concerned about the Seeker of Mysteries being able to put in like an excessive amount of damage, you might want to stonework it or at least have it out. Um, because the nice thing is that you know you can go stonework egg into stonework is always neat, right? Um, and keep uh all these X ones off the field. So, all right, there's stonework, choosing Seeker. And I'm imagining we're gonna see egg. So okay. Pretty easy here. Stonework's going to blow up. You're probably not fetching another stonework. It might be a Harvest Reaper off of this. Are they running? Are we running other one mana creatures? No, it's just stoneworks and reapers. So, okay, there's another reaper. So that's what's important is that when a reaper dies, you need you know you want to have a reaper to uh, to scavenge onto. So, pretty good here. Took off essentially what was going to be two points of damage off of uh, next turn. I would imagine Autumn Fay Bite Blitz is still pretty good here because you're going to go one, two, three, then double strike, four, five, six. That puts Nyx down to 10. And then the next turn, uh, you can do a few more things. Obviously, it depends on what we draw here. All right. Passing it off. All right. Let's see what we draw. It's an extreme speed. Oh, that's actually really interesting. Um, so that's a one mana as well. Version of Bite Blitz plus two plus zero in haste can also give first strike or flash and can't be countered. The part that it, the, the part that's important is the plus two plus zero in haste. The fact that we have a second um, incident sorcery here is quite good because you could probably go one two three go Autumn Fay in either of these. Probably Bite Blitz just so that you have the flashback mode already in. Swing in for six and then when your opponent's at ten, the following turn you can go. Um, hopefully, if we draw, you know our. Uh, our, uh, I keep saying our, but Cool Beans could draw maybe a third source of mana here. Maybe you don't use the treasure. Okay, I, I was thinking you probably want to use the treasure. And here's the Bite Blitz. So going in for six damage, flying here in the air. Plenty at the face. And you know that next turn you can do another six damage. If you land a third land, though, you can do a lot more because you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's lethal, right? So it really just depends what's going to happen here. What's important to remember is uh, if Nyx really wants to, you sacrifice the Harvest Reaper that goes to the yard, and then uh, you fetch out Volatile. Volatile names Autumn Fay, and then you play your other egg, you sacrifice Volatile, and you get another Harvest or another, you know, Volatile. So... We're not quite out of it, and you know we're going to be losing our flyers little by little. If that's the way um, Nyx is going to run out the turn, I mean we're drawing eggs into eggs. It's probably pretty risky to just swing in though with uh, Harvest Reapers because as soon as you get one creature, you can give. There's a lot of ways to give haste. I'm just going to hover this over here so we can see that there's still a uh, Bite Blitz hanging around in the yard. See, so Nix is going to think a little bit. Again, a lot of lines to consider when you're running tutor chains. Like, there's one, there's two. You've already, you're at three mana, but you haven't drawn another. So you're stuck at three. So you're not doing anything much bigger than that. I would imagine if you're concerned about Autumn Fay, another thing you can do. Nope, you have to do it now. Egg is activate only as a sorcery. So you can't do it in response to your opponent. So it's the kind of turn that you have to do now. So yeah, it would be Egg of Avarice, play the other Egg of Avarice. Okay. So we're sacrificing Harvest Reaper. And then if we wanted to... Okay, well, here we go. Volatile Stonework, name's Autumn Fay. Now the question is... Okay, we're doing it. I was wondering if maybe... Uh, oh. Uh-oh. Interesting. Okay. So we're scavenging here. We're getting a colorless card. Oh, I mean, we're fine if we're getting a land. Let's see if it's a land that we're getting. If it's not a land, what do we have? We have the one mana. We don't have reshaper. We don't have coin. So that's not, I think, what we're doing here. I imagine it's the, th the third land. Um... 
Which one would I get in this case? Honestly, more centers of culture, because you're already at center of culture, but that puts you up another one, two, three mana, and then you can do egg and a soul synthesizer. Hey, okay, center of culture. So center of culture. Harvest Reaper just does it all. Funny thing, you can currently scavenge it onto opponent's creatures if you really have to, if you don't have one, but um, from what I remember, that's not going to be possible uh, in the future. So here we go. Egg, Cracking, Volatile Stonework. Four damage to the uh, Autumn Fey here. Playing out Soul Synth. Oh, did we just not fetch a creature? Okay. I mean... Alright. Kind of... Uh, weird there, but I don't think... No information was really gained, right? You were searching this, so... Okay, there's things on the ground. You've lost your flyers, which again was really important to get through the Harvest Reapers, and no attacks is, is probably correct here, obviously. You know that you have to protect your life totals with these things, and you're perfectly happy with them hitting the bin. You've only got one piece of your... Pardon me, of your combo. So just thinking... I imagine it's going to be... Problem is, is your opponent's got two eggs, right? And they've already used two Volatile Stoneworks, and there's four in the deck. So, if you're not doing anything with this now, that's going to be crack an egg, you know, cycle this one out, Volatile Stonework, kill the Stonework, you lose your Enraptured Countess. So, and that's obviously the part that's a little rough. Countess goes up to a 2-2, two -two, and I love this trick where you can use the Express Line to get a land back to your hand. And then you can replay it if you haven't played a land this turn. It's something that I really love seeing. So, Enraptured Countess is now a 5-3 haste prowess. So, we're going to send that in. I... Okay, so here's actually where it's interesting. I'd like to say it's only 5, but... Okay, so we are going to block... Cool. No trample, so Blade's Memory is nice because you can cast back your uh, extreme speed or your strong arm with it, so that's always fun. We'll see what we draw here. Okay, well, Drew the Volatile Stonework. That's interesting. Um, man, because of the eggs, you probably wish you hadn't drawn it. I don't know, actually. You've only got four harvests and four stoneworks right it, the eggs can't get anything else because it only gets creatures we've got two stoneworks there's a harvest reaper in the bin a harvest reaper in exile and one here so we're actually at the three and three there's only one each left in the deck and then your eggs are no longer doing anything so uh, that's always interesting you've got five mana to play with an Imperial Siege or two here would be very interesting. Set your opponent back a lot. But alright, Soul Synthesizer. Cracking it. So this thing digs uh, seven, and it can get any card with an activated ability. So once again, it can get most artifacts that Nyx needs, and it can also get lands. So, lovely card. Very much considering putting it in this year's uh, winter special set. So, I like it a lot. And of course, when you're digging seven, and most of the cards in your deck will fit that description, there's bound to be some uh, choices to think about, and it looks like we found... Uh, well, it's tink I'm seeing Tinker's Tools on top of the library, but that's not where it should go, I believe. Uh, well, let's just see how this resolves. Um, 
could just be a missed drag or something. Interestingly enough, you know, Soul Synthesizer digs, but Tinkerer's Tool just outright fetches most things. So um, it's two tap sacrifice Tinkerer's Tools. You have to sacrifice an artifact. And if you do, you get to search your library for an artifact with mana value less than or equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value plus X. You put onto the battlefield and then shuffle. So uh, this thing does a lot. And, you know, when you run out of uses for your eggs, you know, two and two, you can start getting the pieces that you need to uh, fire off Dead Man's Hand, right? We need a reshaper on board, and then we have to drop a Imperial Coins into play to trigger the Spirited Enter the Battlefield effect. And then reshaper needs to swap between Dead Man's Hand and Coins, or uh, the Imperial Collection. Interestingly enough, there's only two Coins, there's only one Collection, so there's, like, actual ways of, like, hitting your opponent's uh, cards. I know that, um, at least sideboard-wise, there's like flaming point techniques, there's spell pierces, there's ways of keeping uh, the board kind of clear for stuff. I think we're still resolving this uh, look for seven here. Unfortunately, this is one of the parts where I'm running out a little bit of things to say because uh, it is what it is. I can always go back and we can start looking at some sideboards. Though I try not to in the middle of a match, but uh, I guess in this case we'll need to. All right, real quick. Uh, over in the Dead Man's Hand, we've got cards like Life's Entropy, which, you know, you and Animus each have Hexproof from the Chosen Color. Quite relevant. Uh, Observer of Aeons is a backup beatdown plan, same as Seismic Colossus, so you can actually go full aggro. Stained Reliquary for things in the graveyard. Glistening Chalice makes your stuff cheaper or makes your opponent's things cost more if they're all on like some Storm thing. Forgotten Idol, you can name cards and stop it. Same with Spyglass. Coffer is kind of like a big reset. Titan Snare to stop cards that cost mana value 5 or greater. And Chains to essentially stifle uh, activated abilities, uh, triggered abilities here. And a lot of them are just one ofs because you can tutor, you know, most of the package here. Okay. Looks like we picked up the copy of uh, Tinker's Tools. And I think, are we going to... What are we going to run out here? We're paying for two. Okay, so we're running out tools, and we have one floating here, right? So there's the stonework, naming the Countess. Not surprising. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be an egg. Blow up the stonework. Honestly, it's not that bad that we drew it. We just get to do it right here. And then... Um, we get another Harvest Reaper, I would imagine. You really want those Stoneworks to be in your deck or in your hand, not on the field, so that when Cool Beans plays another another uh, One Toughness or these other prowess creatures, you have uh, an answer. Because uh, we're slowly running out of them. I should check if there's ways of getting them out of the yard. Uh, scavenge is search your library. Soul Synthesizer is your library as well. So I don't believe the deck has any way of picking up artifacts that go to the graveyard. So that's something that would be, that'll be interesting to keep in mind. Okay, shuffling the cards around a little bit. Might as well get in the one damage with the haste. I like that. And we're going to second main. We're sacrificing the stonework once more, getting rid of a prowess beats. And we're going to go fetch. So it's either Harvest Reaper or, yeah. So this is the fourth Reaper, right? There's one in the yard. There's one in exile. So we're exiling the other one here. So scavenging this one up to a 3-3. It's always good to keep the one big because you're going to be sacrificing these ones. But, uh, yeah, there's only one more scavenge. And then you'll have to get rid of this big beefy one. So... Uh, Nix is going to keep looking at the deck. Uh, this could take a little while, so I'm just going to preemptively uh, swap us back once more to the deck lists. Just going to look real quick uh, while we're at it at uh, whoops at Cool Beans' sideboard. 
So Sunken Ambitions can keep opponent's creatures off the field. Uh, it's actually not horrible against all these Harvest Reapers. You know, you just put them back in the hand. I do need to check if Volatile... It's when it dies, so that also can keep it off. Um... Flaming Point Technique can actually do plus three plus zero, which is not irrelevant, but Destroy Artifact is going to be really good. Spell Pierce is going to be pretty decent. If you can keep your opponent off of specific cards, this can do some work. Forked Pillar is, is decent. I mean, it deals damage to your opponent's creatures, and then there's Shikai's Readout, but your opponent's not really getting stuff uh, out of the yard. All right. So it looks like our opponent went and uh, fetched uh, the third center of culture. All right, and then ran out the uh, Gilded Spyglass. Cool Beans drew a card, so it's, you know, an instant here that puts a counter on target creature. It gives it Hexproof until end of turn, but doesn't have anything to do uh, or point that at right now. No way of getting these out of the yard. So has to unfortunately pass and uh, give Nyx just a whole other turn here. So now with that said, Nyx has a lot of mana. Right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have one scavenge. No egg can find stonework if you need it, and then you can scavenge, um, which can fetch you at least one card that you need. This could obviously be saying, "Hey, I've got a counter spell," so Nyx could have to keep that in mind. But all you need now is to get dimensional reshaper, and then scavenge one more time or dig. Oh, my gosh, don't even have to dig for it. We drew the imperial collection. Uh, I believe this is going to be the win then. Uh, we know that there's no counter spell, and uh, the only one that's uh, anyway in the deck, I believe, is in the sideboard. I don't think there's any that are main boarded. Uh, does not look like it. So this is just a win here. Um, obviously, if if done correctly. So oh, we don't even have to scavenge. We're just going with Tinkerer's tools. All right, awesome. I love that. Probably getting rid of one of the egg of avarices or. You know, spare avarice, x equals one, uh, so plus two, so we're going for something that costs three, which is dimensional reshaper, there it is. Enters the battlefield, and then you tap this, you play Imperial Collection, and you swap Dead Man's Hand with Imperial Collection, which will resolve the target player loses the game. There we go. Early aggression was stimmied pretty hard by the easy to access removal and then there was no interaction points and just drawing uh just drawing this was not great in the late game uh but there's a lot in the sideboard that can come out so while players do that we're going back online so like i said i don't know if we're gonna see sunken ambitions um like I, it, it's good for keeping like when someone uses the scavenge ability it will still trigger right because it says when it scavenges uh but flaming point technique at least for destroy artifacts seems pretty relevant uh spell pierce i think is still relevant even if your opponent's things cost less it's just that uh nix's sideboard is going to be pretty decent i would imagine life's entropy might come out here i wonder if actually we just switch to the uh crush the opponent plan that's going to be really interesting um Shining Crusader has protection from all colors, so cannot be hit by the destroy artifacts. Um, this gets big enough pretty fast. The lifelink could be relevant. There's a lot of cards here that can exile from the graveyard if you're worried about your opponent flashbacking things. But just like something like Glistening Chalice making them all cost one more to cast. Non-artifact spells cost one more to cast. Might actually be one of the better cards here because your opponent's trying to cast two, three spells and just no mana to do it. Not going to get very far, right? Um, thinking about Coffer, bounces all non-lands. It could be a nice thing to have on the board and then, you know, you just have to pay one or two. You don't have to pay a lot and your opponent's entire board is swept up, which can, like, fizzle a lot of work and effort. Um, yeah. There's uh there's options. So it looks like Cool Beans is ready. Again, Spyglass, Idol. You can just name your opponent's cards that deal with your thing, and then you know that they don't have any answers. So um yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. And there's already a glistening chalice main board. So that, that actually was an option, it was on the table. We didn't see Cradle of War come in, which would have been even more gross if uh that had happened, because 
definitely gets around counter spells. This is just a really tight list. Uh, it's hard to pilot. I would not envy anyone who's playing it. It's definitely not the kind of deck that I would play, but it's super sick. Uh, there's probably going to be definite changes to some of the cards in it, um, but we'll see if uh, the changes are big enough. Uh, it's a really cool combo. It's definitely not something that exists in canon. I mean, there's nothing like Dimensional Reshaper, which is probably a good thing as the person who designed it. Um, I don't. I, I obviously don't think the card is like the epitome of great design. It's one of the two mythics in Worlds Away, and I wanted to do something interesting with both. And I'm like, hey, what's one of the silliest things I can do? And, well, Dimensional Reshaper is one. Uh, I wanted to use it for, like, flipping lands to do stuff. I wanted to, like, give creatures haste because if you flip a creature into one that you've already had on the board that technically gives pseudo haste to what you just played. There's um, a lot of cool stuff here. And uh, it's nice to see cards from like absolutely different sets all get pulled together to make just something, something really nuts. Um, Light Bless Claymore. I mean, there's just the one copy, but it immediately attaches, gives plus two plus zero and lifelink, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, but yeah, Beans being down a game, uh, I knew it was going to be a matter of, can you get, I think like one extra land might have made a difference there because we could have had, or at least the one extra untapped because we had to go one land, one land. Uh, there was moments where if we hadn't had the Volatile Stonework either, uh, Cool Beans definitely had like a lot of damage. So it'll be interesting to see on this game too how things uh, go. Oh, and, and Beans was down to a keep six, right? So... Gonna be on the play. Oof, this time around, that's probably a mulligan to six again. It's just one mountain and... Okay, you've got your Northern Express line, which is a blue, but you've also got Galvan Coal line. Bite Blitz, Seeker, not the greatest hand to deal with your opponent's stuff, and I'm not seeing anything in from the sideboard. Over on Nix's field, we are seeing Mysterious Coffer, which is the one uh, kind of like board sweep that I was pretty sure was gonna come in. Uh, here's Cradle of War already. Center of Culture with Harvest Reaper and Center and Blackwall's Edge mean that we're uh, we're back to uh, back to three mana on turn two. Brine Fleet Bay is also here. Yeah, this is a pretty decent hand. You're not tutoring for anything. You're not digging necessarily, but uh, by virtue of being like artifact lands, uh, this is going to be pretty decent. So Beans is keeping five on this hand. Um, We've got the lands, we've got the the beaters, which is important, and there's no volatile stoneworks here, so this could be a very different game, even while we're keeping five. Now the question is, is what are you throwing back, right? You've got a spell pierce to keep them off something early, and I imagine that's what you're holding up rather than running out a seeker of mysteries. Um, feels like punishing them early for a play is going to be easier when they're not on three mana, but we'll see. Um... It sucks to throw back the beats because the beats is kind of what you need. You've got the three and a coal line, but not really much to do with it. It's it's a rough hand. It's it's definitely I get why we went to uh, Mulligan to five, but boy, it doesn't feel necessarily great. Uh, coal line means yeah, we can throw back one of the lands. Uh, now the question is, do you throw back Autumn Fay or? Seeker? I mean, there could be a reason to throw back Seeker, as weird as that sounds, because it could be turn one, you're holding up your spell pierce, and you're probably going to use it, right? Um, oh, actually, no. Non-creature, right? And there, if it's Hearts of his Reaper coming out, spell pierce will not find a target, so that'll be actually pretty sad if that's the case, but then you could have turned two, um, and yeah, it is very tricky. It is a very tricky decision, because if you go down to just one beater... A single point of removal. It hasn't been... The slow plays haven't been atrocious. Um, the three-minute one was getting a little intense there, but... That's all right. Again, tricky lines, tricky decisions. All right, coal line going back. So it's going to be like a turn one, a turn two. You'll have two mana. Turn one, you can hold up spell pierce, but... Uh, it looks like we're not doing that. We're just running out Seeker, which ultimately is actually fine because Harvest Reaper is the turn one play here. Um, does it? It means like you're not hitting Tink Tool, Synthesizer, Vials, Dead Man's Hand if it was being played on turn one. But like, 
that would have been really interesting. And it looks like we kept the combo line. I would imagine. I'm not seeing any of the beatdown cards. I mean, I guess Brian Fleet Bay counts as a beatdown, but... Alright. So, well, if it's one mana, I would imagine it's going to be the Harvest Reaper. There's really not much else uh, in that hand that's going to be played. Your creature's sticking around. That's not nothing. Nizev Enforcer is actually pretty fun here. Which is good, because it means you don't have to decide between doing nothing... Um, you can run out the Wayfarer Shrine, you can run out in his Evan Forcer, and you can hold up Spell Pierce, which is nice. Uh, unless you think that nothing really bad is going to happen, and you can run out an early Autumn Fae, but what's nice about Enforcer is that it makes copies, right? And right now in this version, the copies can still make copies, so if your opponent has their Volatile Stonework, if you manage to make even a single Niz Evan Forcer copy, you're in business, right? So, but yeah, big decisions here. I mean, I would play Nizev, hold up Spell Pierce. Your opponent's likely, if they're on three mana, you see Center of Culture, you see this. You you can probably be sure that Enchantment's on the way here with a Black Wall's Edge. Um, you probably want to keep it up because three mana, I mean, two mana is Cradle of War, two mana is Mysterious Coffer. Either of these, I mean... You can survive a coffer. But nope, looks like we're just going for the combo. Uh, not combo, uh, combat play. So swinging in for one, getting out Autumn Fae, and uh, yep, letting our opponent play play some stuff. Okay, well, here's Egg of Avarice. Uh, that would have been really nice to keep off the board, but yeah. So that's going to be Edge. We're at three. And again, we have we have Prescience, right? We're, we're Omniscient here. We see the opponent's hand. Um, and if Cool Beans is feeling like my game plan is I need to put out creatures and I need to have things like Autumn Fae already on the board for when I draw the damage, because that's just how I'm going to win, then yeah, you run out those creatures. It's just, uh, it's just going to be rough because if the Cradle of War resolves, though, we're going to, yeah, we're going to have one, two, three, four on the next turn. Uh, here it's only three, so either of these still get hit. But, yep. Yeah. Spell Pierce is uh, not online here, so you kind of have free reign to do what you want. If you play Cradle of War, that'll be two artifacts. Well, it's each other, so one other, so it'll cost down to two, but it'll be pretty easy to get out some of the other ones. Uh, we've already played the land for the turn, so Workshop and Brine Fleet Bay are going to come out later. Tough choices here. The fact that there's egg and your opponent's tapped out means, like, you can already start doing volatile stonework shenanigans, right? So, not this turn, because you're not doing it twice, but... Mysterious Coffer, you're not getting to two mana to bounce Cool Beans' whole board right now. Okay, looks like we're... Interesting. Okay, so we're using it for blue. Surveilling. I've never seen someone actually play the coins for the coins ability, which is just kind of funny. Um, what's important about it is it then converts other things into colors. So, though, I don't know if that's really relevant in uh, Nix's deck, though. There's not really anything that requires blue. In fact, nothing in the deck requires anything but colorless, right? So... Yep. Surveilling again. So what do we put in the yard? We put a rail line. Uh, okay. So a cradle. Okay, so we managed to land two artifacts, which is nice because... Now that ability just costs the one, right, to activate. 
Okay, that's a really good draw, actually. Yeah, you could go Nizev, Strongarm. I mean, obviously, there's a Coffer in hand. We know. Um, so it's not like Nizev is... Pardon me. It's not like Nizev is uh, going to be amazing here. But a strong arm is going to do some serious work. So uh, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage, I think, between the two. You get a tap treasure. And now I'm imagining, because we didn't play out Nizev here. Um, okay, good. That's tapped. Swing in for 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. No, oh, no, no. Oh, my bad, we're good. We were at nineteen, not eighteen, I guess. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yeah, we're good. I don't know why players don't just, like, take down the life by, like, the flat amount, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we have the mana for Spell Pierce up, which makes me feel, uh, makes me feel a bit safer, um, for, uh, Cool Beans' perspectives. But, it's gonna be what? One, two, three, four mana, or five, right, if we get out the, uh, workshop. And with five, you're not Spell Piercing an egg, um... Coins is already here, but the interesting thing is, is if you fire off Mysterious Coffer, Coins goes back to hand, and then you can Dimensional Reshape or stuff. But we're just kind of missing the Dead Man's Hand itself. Mm. I don't really see a reason for Brian Fleet Bay this turn over... The workshop. You're only playing artifact spells. Yeah, you can't use it on the ability for Mysterious Coffer, but it also just taps for colorless, the same as Brian Fleet Bay. So might as well run out the workshop, right? Um and also the interesting thing is is obviously it's it's weird, but like this is an artifact, and this can put artifact cards with mana value three or less. So you can actually use Cradle of War to ramp. Um, Brian Fleet Bays, so. Few decision points here, especially because of Egg of Avarice, right? So if you can land an egg and then sacrifice, you can get a Stonework into play. Stonework can name something like Autumn Fay is probably the pick. Then... That's what you can do that for one, two. Oh, uh, well, okay. You could, you could Brian Fleet Bay to have three. So you can play this to play the egg for free. Then you would have one, two, three, four mana to spend. You can sacrifice, you could scavenge. You can then get, um, uh, what do we need? I mean, the pieces that we need, obviously, like Dead Man's Hand. And blow up. Yeah, this combo is just really good. I mean, in in part somewhere in there, right? Um, okay, so Brian Fleet Blade is the third artifact. Cradle now is free. Cradle plays Dimensional Reshaper. Okay. There's also weird things you can do with Reshaper where you can flip cards. So what you can do is like tap for two, flip, tap for two, right? So you can go up to five mana. So anyway. Cradle of War cheats out Dimensional Reshaper, which means that the Spell Pierce can't be used against it. And there's still plenty of mana, right? So that was my one concern with Spell Pierces, is it's very hard to get value out of them. Okay, no, we're just going to Cradle of War and do it that way. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if we're tapping the uh, Cradle of War now, we can put down either Coffers or Egg. There's the coffer. The important thing here is not that you're saving on mana, because you, you you are, but it's the fact that it's uncounterable, right? 
So Mysterious Coffer gets to land without uh, Cold Beans being able to do much about it. Dimensional Reshaper being a three cost means that if the point that you're going to pay is two, this is going to stay on the field. Oh, actually, do we have... Do we have the win? Is there a... Man, no wonder Nyx is taking a lot of time with this stuff. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's two mana for the coffers to get rid of your opponent's board. But do you actually need to do that? What you need to find is... Oh, okay. All right. Again, it's instant speed. So it's the kind of turn where you 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 hold up activation, right? I mean, just bounce absolutely everything. So you definitely don't want to run out Nizev, then strong arm it, because, uh, yeah. That's just going to get coffered. It's kind of like the in-between point, right? You have to do something scary enough, though not too scary that coffers is firing. I mean, if coffers is firing anyway, you might as well just swing for less without spending a strong arm, because that treasure token is also just going to get rebounced. Some tough decisions here. I mean, yeah, Coffers just does a lot of work. That's what the card is meant to do, right? You play it out. You say, hey, I've got mana open. I do like, though, that... Oh, okay. Well. Okay. We're forcing the activation of Mysterious Coffer. That's fine. That's... It is what it is. Like we we know it's gonna be an X equals two coffer here, right? So Reaper coins cradle. This gets exiled. Doesn't hit any of your lands. But you kinda want to use the coffer because you want the coins in hand, right? Because all you have to do then is um, run out egg, run out harvest reaper. So that's three. I mean, yeah. And then, or two, and then it plays for itself, right? And then you sacrifice the reaper, you scavenge, you get dead man's hand, you play dead man's hand, you play back the coins, and then you've got that, right? And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six mana. This is like pretty much it again. Yes, beans is holding up spell, spell pierce, and you can't use reshaper for that. You can use reshape. Oh, you know what? There's a really interesting trick here. And I want to see if. Uh, no, there's nothing else that's a uh, share a card type. So. Okay, there, there is a trick. Okay, I'm seeing it. So because this is an artifact, this is an artifact. You can use a dimensional reshaper. Oh, no, it doesn't work because then your land bounces, right? Because it switches. Never mind. I'm thinking too deep here. I know you can do some shenanigans, but. It's the protection shenanigans that I'm thinking of. Ignore what I'm thinking about. It's clearly too late at 11 p.m. to be thinking about these, like, crazy deck lines here, so. Okay, so we're doing it this way? Yep. So we're keeping Mysterious Coffer for a second time, so. Sweet. That's not what I was thinking of, but yes, sorry, you can do that. You can swap the coffers here. And that's going to put coffers back in the hand. So you actually do get to preserve a coffer. Ah, no, this is what, Brian Fleet Bay right now? Yeah, okay. So no, that should be here. It's a land. That's not like horrible you went down on the land but like you're kind of fine with that so now second main it's a shame we couldn't use the treasure but you know it is what it is mysterious coffer is still there which is like <laughs> you play anything out we can still get rid of it oh my gosh so here's the big joke for years 
this has just been like, haha, Time Spiral made a really silly, dumb card and it doesn't do anything. And people are finding like absolutely crazy things to do with it now, like with artifact lands and coffers and uh, with Shining Crusader switching to give protection at instant speed for removal. So, um, yeah. All right. Are we playing things out? Man, you know that, uh, I mean, Nezev is not a horrible to have out, especially if you can make copies, but it's looking pretty tight. Two pieces are already here, right? Coins and Reshaper, just got to get the dead man's hand, and with this deck, it's not too hard of a thing to do, so. Nope, okay, looks like we said, whatever, no spell pierce, I'm just running out Autumn Fae. It's an X equals two, if you want to bounce it, you'll have to pay all the mana. Okay, so we have we don't have creature anymore, so this is not currently tapping for two. As soon as we replay Harvest Reaper, though, it will. So there it is. It must be really tough being in the seat because you're like. You can, like, I can, I can almost see, like, the line, but there's so many moving parts, and the mana is so different. Uh, three artifacts. This can tap for two. I'm going to guess Cradle of War, because there's three artifacts here, so that can start cheating things in. Let me think. Tap two. Cradle of War, right? Cradle of War taps, brings an egg. Egg, Sacrifice, Harvest Reaper, get Harvest Reaper. I mean, sorry. Sacrifice the Harvest Reaper. The opponent has a creature, which is, again, why we're closing this gate. You can Oh, but you can get your own, or do you go get Volatile Stonework here? I don't think it makes a difference here. You've got the Reaper hand. The important thing is that you just pay the two on the Scavenge, because then you can go get um, you can get your dead man's hand. Uh, okay. Issue is I'm not sure we can pull it off this turn, right? We use the Cradle to get the Egg. Yeah, we've got two mana left. If we use a Reshaper to flip stuff for the rebuilding, we're not keeping it for uh, doing the combo when you need it for the combo. Coins is back in hand where it has to be. I mean, the problem is Cool Beans isn't putting any pressure, right? Even next turn, this, this doesn't deal damage, right? So it depends what... Uh, cool Beans' draws. There's no flashback. It's just strong arms. No bite blitzes. Can safely attack with one. That's not blocking anyway here. Okay. Sacrificing Harvest Reaper. Okay. Nice. Picking Autumn Fay here with the stonework. Okay, well, if we're not pulling off the combo this turn, we can get rid, because we can turn, yeah, we can use Dimensional Reshaper to turn Coffers into Egg of Avarice, so we crack that, we crack you, blow up the Autumn Fay, and then go get a, another Harvest Reaper back on the field. It's hard to put pressure on an opponent that can just keep tapping things to uh, nuke your board, right? So... There's a Harvest Reaper, so that's uh, one, two, three in the yard. I guess I can leave it open for you guys. Um, honestly, not really much of a point. We know there's one in the yard. Um, phew. Methodical is the word that's in my head right now, just looking at this gameplay. 
it's not the uh the fastest but there's some really really crazy stuff that's happening with dimensional reshaper which is really nice here you got the two mana so you'll be able to use mysterious coffer on your opponent's turn so you're still holding the thread of that up Having the opening hand with it is just so good. And I think there was only one in the entire sideboard, right? Or is there one main board? Nope. It's the one in the sideboard. So yeah, obviously we can we can dig for it, right? But having it right off the bat at the beginning is really good. All right. So we're using the last of the two mana. We are scavenging. So the question is, are we picking up Dead Man's Hand? We've used everything, but like the card's safe in our hand. And Cradle of War means we're cheating one of these two things in. Yeah, there's Dead Man's. Obviously, don't cast it. Oh, well, you can. Your opponent's tapped out. Maybe you do. <sighs> this might be a turn to play it, right? I mean, if you were worried about your opponent's... Um, Your opponent's artifact removal then yes it's a reason for keeping your hand cool beans just drew and it was not what beans needed to uh win that match and the combo was already in hand so it might have been a slow match in the sense that you know things took a little while to play out but uh combo made it and uh very hard to disrupt uh you can assume there'll be some changes on um, we'll see which cards get hit but uh in this case, it was, some stuff was pretty pretty nasty here at the end. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the match. It's a very interesting matchup, that's for sure. And uh, congratulations to Nyx on getting the finalist uh, tr uh, promo, I guess, here. And uh, the trophy, I really wonder what card is going to get promoed. Uh, there's a lot of pieces. It could be Reshaper, but uh, there's you've got a lot of choices. So thanks for sticking around with us, and uh, take care. We'll uh, definitely see you soon in the next month with some more content. So have a good one.